So thank you for coming. Uh, I'm gonna try to get this started on a good note, but if not, you'll forget it by the time the com conference ends. So here we go, fertile ground, the roots of closure. I'm gonna talk about some influences of closure. Uh, here's my agenda. Um, I'll try to get to all of these things, but uh, I can't promise anything given the draconian rules. Who am I? Well, that's me right there. <laughs> Haven't gotten that out of the way. Uh, the year is 1994. It was a great year. A great year for me. I was starting college, uh, trying to decide which philosophy program I was going into. Uh, but less important was a language called C++ was really starting to gain some traction. Actually, it, it, it was a very popular language by this point. It was four years, three or four years away from standardization, but uh, it had already gained a, a great reputation as a language that uh, was, was strongly typed. It, 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 people were coming from C, and C++, C++ really uh, filled, a, filled uh, a, a sore spot for them. Now, this, this, this was the common view, but this is also the view of a, of a, of a certain person you might know. Uh, Rich wrote a paper back in 1994 that, 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 that put together this, this really cool functional way to do things in C++. And it's a, it's a very good paper. And he, he has nothing but praise for C++. In it. <laughs> Recommended reading. Uh, but what changed? You know, wh why, why are we here? Uh, talking about closure, and, 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 and instead of Rich being home, uh, fighting with C++. Well, uh, like all good stories, this one starts with a camel. Uh, many camels, actually. See, the, uh, there was a language called Perl. Maybe you've heard of it. it it's supposed to have a, a release sometime soon, but... Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it really, it, it came out of nowhere, and... and, and got people really excited about dynamic programming. And, and, and in fact, it was, among other things, it was the, it was the glue that held the, web, the early web together. And, and people were really excited about Perl and really excited about the possibilities of dynamic, dynamic languages. Uh, and, and, and another person came along, this guy named Paul Graham. And he, he was talking about another dynamic language, but it was called Lisp. And, and, his essays got people really, really excited about Lisp, and 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 the confluence of the excitement around Perl and, and, and other languages and, and Paul Graham's uh, essays, you would think we're ready, we're on the cusp, the Lisp is going to break out. Well, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. There was a real visceral. <laughs> there, there is, there was, and there is a really visceral reaction to 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 Lisp, and and whether that's founded or not, it's it's real, and and. The world was just not ready, I think. So another language came along that sort of uh, filled a lot of sore spots that, that existed from C++, and that was Java. And Java had a lot of good things about it. Uh, and, and many of them uh, influence closure itself. Uh, but unfortunately, Java has a lot of problems. And, 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 and it's those problems. That, that, have inf that probably have influenced closure more because not all influences are, are, are positive. And, and I'm gonna try to touch on all of these points at some point, but uh, just keep in mind that, that Java is a, is a big influence on closure, but not in the way that you might expect. All, all, not always in the way you might expect. Uh, so there's a, there is a, there's a quote, you've probably all read it, and it's by Guy Steele, and, and he's talking about C++ programmers when he says this, and it was, it was tongue in cheek. I, I believe it was tongue in cheek, but I think that there's a lot of truth to this statement. But unfortunately, I think that Java falls on the wrong side of the halfway mark. And, and so, as a result, there still, there still was, people were not ready for Lisp. It, it just wasn't close enough, enough to Lisp to, to uh, to get people to adopt it. So really, clearly something had to change. Something had to change in, the, in the, the, the overall mindset of the programming community. And, and I think that it did, and, and, and there are two big reasons among others, but there, there are three big reasons among others, and, and those are Ruby, Python, and JavaScript. And, and I think that these languages have really opened people's minds for uh, what Lisp 
what, what a LISP has to offer. And if, you're, if, you, if you come from a background in these languages, I want to say thank you, because it's, it's through your hard work that, you've, that, that, that we've gotten to the point where we can actually have a conference where 200 people show up for a LISP. Uh, those languages help to uh, help to work against the kingdom of nouns. So this is this phrase comes from an essay that Steve Yeagy wrote that uh, basically refers to the way that Java makes you cram all of your 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 functions into to be attached to to classes. And you know whenever we're writing, whenever we start with a new Java project, we 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 have these these classes, these domain objects, and we figure out all of the attached behavior. And eventually you get to the point where you have this big util thing that's where you put all of these, these methods that don't quite fit anywhere. And, and th those are really functions. And, and actually those, those other things are actually functions too, but uh, we won't talk about that right now. Uh, so there's a, there's a few languages that, that, that take a different approach to this. They, don't, they do not attach their behavior to the classes. In fact, it's separate. Uh, I have clips in the middle it has other influences, but I'm going to stick to this for now. So Lisp and Clips and Dylan, they take a different approach. And they, they, their, their unit of, of programming is the function. And, and, and to do object-oriented programming, they, they, they have generic functions. And the generic functions uh, dispatch on, on the, the types of their arguments, and one of them being their, the, the, the classes that they're dealing with. So, they, they handle the problem where if you want to extend the class, uh, how do you do it? Well, in Ruby, you would, you would just go into the class and you would you'd open it up and you put it in there. But unfortunately, we, we know how that ends. Uh, <laughs> that's, but that's, that's not fair. I mean, we, we, we love Ruby and there's a lot of Ruby programmers here, so maybe this is more appropriate. <laughs> so, but in any case, there's a monkey in there. <laughs> you know, another way, you know, Mr. Devlin is going to talk about this further, so I won't go into detail about this. So, you know, we, we've heard all of this before. Closure pulls things out into a protocol, and, and you extend the protocol, and, and, and your things are not, your, your, your classes are not direct, directly manipulated. Alfred North Whitehead. He, he was the star of this great movie that I saw, Are We There Yet? Did, did anyone see that, that movie? It was, it, was, it was a great film. Uh, I think Rich really opened a can of worms when he, when he made Alfred North Whitehead the hero of his, his movie because uh, for two reasons. Well, well one, there, there are other influences like Leslie Lamport that, that, that I, I think are probably equally important, but, but more importantly, Dummies like me went out and found process and reality and looked in there and said, where's the part about do-sync? I don't see anything about multi-methods. Well, what's going on? It's really dense stuff. But one thing that enriches talk, besides state, time, identity, uh, is the, the notion of subjectivity, which I, I, I don't think that a lot of people have given uh, play to. So again, like, like all good stories, this one starts with a man in love, or a, a man of the world. Ricky, he's, he's not in love, but he has desires like all men, and he hates, he, he loves a woman who's funny, and he loves a woman who's lovely, and he wants a woman who hates the show. Uh, this, is a, this is a I Love Lucy reference, so just bear with me here. There's a woman named Lucy. She's lovely, she is lovely, she's funny, but she, she does not hate the show. So you know, how, do, how do we figure out if there's a match between these two people? Well, at any given point in time, we can, we can check. Uh, if there's a match, and, and, and we see if, if, they, if, 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 there's a, if Ricky can fall in love. Well, at this time, at this point in time, no, he doesn't. There's not a match. But there may be another point in time. Perhaps Lucy is, is disenchanted with the, the, the world of Cuban big band music, and, and she decides that she hates the show. And so that's the time that, that Ricky meets her, and, and there is, in fact, a match, and he falls hopelessly in love and is, is in, in, in big trouble. There are hijinks ahead. Uh, I, I think that's the way we need to approach programming in closure. We, we, can't, we can't always uh, have such control over the world where, where we just stop everything and say, well, what is the value of now? Well, what, now, the, the, the word now in, in closure is meaningless because things are just moving along and we have to be able to deal with that a subjective view, 
and it's an important it's an important point, and 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 I'm not sure that uh, I'm not sure that that point is stressed enough. So prologue and, and data log, these are these are two languages, logic languages that that have a, a profound influence on closure. But I'm not sure that we've quite seen the the, the full influence yet. And, and to to explain what I mean, I'm going to talk about TDD, uh, but not the one that you think. I'm talking about. <laughs> and, and what that means is not, not everything should be test driven. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to posit that perhaps, maybe, maybe our programs aren't supposed to be test driven either. And so because our, our programs are made of, of thought stuff. It's, it's, a real, it's a real nebulous term. I have a copyright on this, by the way. And, 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 and perhaps, perhaps our programs need to, be, uh, need to be proven. They need to be, uh, they need to be dealt with logically in order to, to, to get up to, for, for I'm, not I'm not sure what I'm trying to say, but they, they, we, we need to approach the programs logically, and we need to be able to prove them, instead of just throwing a bunch of tests at them. Now, that's not to say that, that TDD is not important. Uh, I just think that in, in the case, in the direction that closure is going, it just has too many Ds. We need to test. It, it's important. It's part of the bigger picture. So Haskell, Haskell has huge influence over closure. It can't be understated. and and. A lot of it is superficial in that if you just line up a bunch of core Haskell functions and, and, and put them side by side with closure functions, it looks exactly the same. And in a lot of cases, it, the, the idioms for using them are exactly the same. But, but more importantly is the, the influence of laziness that Haskell brings to the table. And what laziness gives us is it helps us avoid, among other things, uh, explosion, uh, exploding computation, non-termination, and full realization of intermediate results so that we can process uh, large chunks of data. Well, Haskell's laziness is pervasive, but closures is not. So two things are less solved by laziness than, than they would be in Haskell, whereas full realization, the most important part, in my opinion, uh, is, is, is fully supported with closures laziness. And that, the, the, but, but closures laziness is a windowed view, meaning that we deal with things not at one at a time laziness, we deal with things in big chunks of laziness. So that, uh, although, and this is why things like uh, exploding computation aren't fully supported, because you could, taking a windowed view, uh, part, things at the end of your window, things at the end of your trunk could be extremely uh, expensive to calculate. And, and this windowed view has, has an influence in something called MonetDB, which is a database that tries to solve uh, problems of, of, of query speed by trying to align uh, the, the data sets that it deals with with uh, cache sizes. So there's a paper, we can, we can talk after this, find me if you're interested really good paper that describes one ADB and you'll see a lot of the same influence, you'll, you'll see a lot of the same talk that you might see about closure in there. But databases in general uh, have a huge influence on closure in, in many ways, but mostly the way that it deals with, with mutation. And uh, the, these, these, you know, we know what these are. Uh, the, the closure's model for mutation and, and the semantics deriving uh, the way that things change. Uh, speaking of mutation, if we if you if we view our object-oriented programming, uh, our procedural programming as as a set of, of a graph of, mute, of interlocking interlocking mutations, it becomes very complicated, and and this is what we're constantly dealing with, and and this is part of the reason why I think that uh, maybe taking the TDD approach is, is not always the best way because this can get extremely complicated and it's hard to cover all of these paths, but what Clojure hopes to do is to bring that down to one point, and that's the reference type, which 
is, is motivated by a language called ML, and ML also has ref types. It, the, the semantics for change are very different, but that, that, that isolated point of change is, is the same across both languages. And, and they, it, it actually looks similar if you, if you put them side by side, bearing in mind that the semantics are different. Erlang, Erlang is another interesting language. It, it, it's, it's a beautiful language, and it, it, it's, it's very strong for what it tries to do, and which is uh, providing uh, distributed computation, among other things. And, and to take a, the example of a simple counter, you would just you, you, you package your, your functions and, 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 and you, you match on certain parameters and, and when you when you want you, to update your counter you, you, you're matching on the end of the process at, at the, on the side of the process and and, and you know your, your, your logic for acting your logic for updating is, is tightly packaged with the process itself a closure takes a slightly different approach to that in that uh, just the state itself, is, is hidden, is, is packaged in the agent. And the function to perform on the, on, on, on that state is given instead of, so it's an open system. It's more open than Erlang. And it, so it, it's very, it's very closure. It's very closure. Closure is very open, very open. There's ways to extend things at runtime. Uh, and so although Erlang has, a, has an influence on closure, it's, it's more along the, the negative influence, whereas Clojure tries to back away from certain design decisions that Erlang made. Okay, so <laughs> Homer describes a, a, a scenario where uh, Mycenaean, uh, a Mycenaean chariot race is occurring. And, and the, the, the chariot technology that he describes is actually more advanced than, than the, the the chariots in his own culture. And this is exactly how I feel every time I read a paper or a book from the 70s or 80s. And it, it's just an amazing thing. There's so much information back there that, that, it, that, that closure is built upon that I, if, if you just spent, a, you could spend a lifetime reading about it and, 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 and never exhaust the well. But thankfully for us, Rich has read all of those. <laughs> and he's put them together in closure, and he's made a beautiful language. And I think that one day, when we get to the point of, uh, you know, we've been here a few years, and, and closure's gained some influence. Some other sap is going to be at a conference talking about his favorite language, and he's gonna throw up his agenda that's going to look something like this. That's all I have.